750. It has got to be one of the most uncomfortable, squirm-inducing things that we contemplate even doing. Marching into the boss's office and saying, I deserve more money, I deserve a raise. If the mere thought of that makes you faint at heart, you're going to get some tips on how to proceed from our next guest who says, you'll never get anything without asking for it. The book is Ask Outrageously, the secret for getting uh, to getting what you really want. Why can't we ask Linda Swindling what we really want? What is wrong with women? Well, and it's women, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. But for women, it's a lot of us were raised not to. We were raised to be polite or accept what we were given. Or we've just assumed that that's what people want, right. that it's going to be rude. But that's not quite the case. Do you know, I have often said that I have done my own children a disservice by making them too polite. That's funny you should say that. But politeness works. Okay. So when we surveyed people, and we surveyed over a thousand, mm -hmm. they said, you know, I am very likely to turn down someone who isn't polite or considerate. Okay. So that actually works in their favor. They just need to ask with it. Don't hold back from asking for something. You say be prepared to hear no. Yeah. Okay. So think about it. You've been thinking for a raise or thinking about a promotion for a long time. Mm -hmm. But when you ask, this may be the very first time someone has ever heard it. Mm. So they may have to process, they may have to think about it, and also they may, they, it may not be the right time. If they say no, how do you go back? Or when do you go back? The very first thing you do is you say, I heard you say no, right. can I ask you about that? Is this in the same meeting? Same meeting. Okay. They've said no, don't freak out. Okay. Say, I heard you say no, can you tell me about that? They may just say, yeah, I can't talk to you right now, can you come back at four? Or they may say, I have, I'm looking at you for a leadership program and if you're at that level you can't go through yet mm -hmm. or they may give you some really good advice like you really need to learn this skill or that before we can ask okay so Linda I hate criticism constructive I don't care I hate I hate it but I, under, I understand that and I take it and I receive it I still don't like to hear it so how what's the advice for getting over that when you hear it let it land and even if you disagree, say, huh, I haven't heard that. I, I didn't think about that. Let me think about that and get back with you. Mm -hmm. So you want to process it. There may be something valid there, or maybe it's a misperception, it's like you know, code. misperception about who you are. Okay. And you're going to have to help educate them on what you really are and what you really do. Okay. And, and basically, um, lastly, how do you know exactly what you want? Which sounds really funny. And everybody thinks, okay, just money. That's what I want. But are there other things? And how do you negotiate those other things, too? You've got to leave yourself open. So when you ask, one question you can say is, I'm here to ask about a raise, a promotion, a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. What else should I be asking? You know, if you were in my position, what mm -hmm. else would you think about? And sometimes you're going to find something amazing that you didn't even know. But people get on their track. We all do, you know, and we focus and we forget to leave ourselves open to that possibility. Mm -hmm. You got to ask and just sit there and let them think and let them respond. Do, is there a way that we communicate that's wrong, too? I, I, I often find sometimes people don't listen or they don't even wait till you get to the end and then they jump in. What is that go golden rule for communication? If you can, say... I heard you say this. Am I getting what you said correct? Mm. So listen for that first. Stay in the question if you can. If you can live in the question, they're going to give you some insights, some information that you never would have had otherwise. Okay. If you are so ready to shut them off, you'll never get to that deeper thing that they might have told you if you'd been more approachable. Okay. And I guess um, for me, the big question is how do we get into our minds that we, in fact, are worthy? of promotion, of, you know, a, a better, even office or cubicle or whatever. How do we get over that, especially as women? You have to practice everywhere. You okay. have to practice every single place you go asking. One other thing, though. Mm -hmm. Allison, there's some people who do your job. There's some people who do other jobs. And they're not as good. And they're cheating people. Yeah. And you find out, oh, my goodness, this person's got the business or this person has some, something along those lines. You know, they, they have the client. And you think... They're not as good as I am. Mm. So you're almost doing people a disservice if you don't ask. Really? Yeah, sometimes you're the role model. Okay. Sometimes you're the one that asks, and people go, oh, mm -hmm. maybe I should ask too. You got it, but you have to let people know. You right. have to let people know what you want. Linda Swinling also says that you should do your research on what type of boss you're approaching for a raise, then tailor your pitch to their personality type. For example, if your boss is a decider on who is focused on details or making quick decisions, do not try to engage him or her in a little chit chat. Mm -hmm. Give bullet points that bolster your case for a raise and then... Yeah, do your homework. Do your homework and know who you're talking to. Yeah. Know Good your place. audience.